Good afternoon, everybody. Phil Brown here with JitCAD Cam. This week, I'm going to cover how the new tool paths inside of Fusion 360 have dramatically changed how I 3D surface, especially when it comes to things like mold cavities and vacuum form molds, as you can see in front of me. Now, with that being said, you will need the machining extension to be able to use these tool paths. You can start a free trial in Fusion at any time. Outside of that, if you're looking to buy the machining extension, by all means, consider myself over here at JitCAD Cam. We are an Autodesk authorized reseller. We can also support and train you up to par with anything and everything you need in your Fusion 360 software. So let's go ahead and jump into this. So as you guys can see, I've already roughed out this cavity for the sake of time, just so I don't bore you all to death. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and start with what I call my traditional approach prior to the adoption of geodesic and the corner tool path. What I would do is I would go in and I would use like a steep and shallow tool path and I'm gonna go ahead and pull my half inch ball end mill here. Now, what I have done is I've reorganized my actual speeds and feeds to the most common one that I use against the tool. So you guys won't see me selecting a bunch today. This is just a little bit of a pro tip to help you guys out. Because I've also tied step over and step down to my tools, things will automatically come through inside of Fusion 360. So we're gonna go ahead and hit this with a all the way to the outside of my part. Again, step over, step downs automatically coming through. And we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. Now this will take a second or two to calculate. There's quite a lot of surfaces here, but once this calculates, we're gonna evaluate what we've got. Now, again, this may be more than adequate for some of you. Some of you may be post polishing your molds and your cavities. However, with some step down adjustments, you can get a lot done here. Now me personally, I'm not a fan of this now because of new tool paths, nothing that Autodesk did other than give me more features. But as you can see is these horizontal lines based on what's going on inside of Fusion. Now, I would like a toolpath that much more follows these surfaces and blends together much more nicely. So as you can see, still a great toolpath, still a great result. I actually like to use this toolpath more now than ever as my uh, pre-finishing kind of strategy. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and throw on some stock to leave. We're gonna give that 10 thou instead. I may actually even bump up how much we're taking this down to. Again, the idea here is, is all I'm trying to do is knock down any of those cusps or square kind of edges that we get from when we roughed this out. As you can see here is if I was to machine up this surface with all these kind of stairs here, and let me go ahead and kick off my tool path. My tool could shatter, it could deflect, there's a lot going on. So by doing a, as I call, pre-finish, I would result in getting a much more evenly blended surface so that when we come in with our next strategies, we're not getting anything that's going to cause kind of premature tool wear or again, cause tool deflection, chatter and things of that nature. So now let's look at that geodesic tool path. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the geodesic tool path. Now, the best way to think about geodesic is it's surface driven and it's also area driven is how I like to imagine it. So it's thinking within a certain area. So you can't actually do several areas at once. And I say broke up areas or like islands, so to say. We can only kind of work from the top down or the outside in or only in a certain region in each situation. So what I'm going to do for this very first actual tool path, and again, if you guys haven't seen it, I like to just get paths on the parts. We can reorganize them later, is I'm going to start by doing this uppermost kind of area here. Now, I'm going to pick my two surfaces. I'm really not going to adjust anything else with the exception that I am going to not turn on machine overholes, and you'll see why here in a moment. Now, if you want to dive deeper into the geodesic toolpath, I did do another Fusion Friday video on that. Now, what I'm looking for is I guess we got to get our toolpath turned back on. For those of you wondering, I'm pushing F7 on my keyboard to toggle in and toggle off. But as you can see, we are now chasing this upper profile. We are transitioning in the corners. And basically, to say the least, we are smoothing out that top surface, right? Now, if you are to turn on things like machine overholes, guys, again, keep in mind what's going to happen here. I already know, and it always makes me laugh because I forget about it until I do it, is it's going to look for any open area and machine over it. Like that is by definition what's going to happen. So this big inside area, even though it's a pocket, not a hole, it's going to machine over that. And you can fix that now with boundary selections, right? So again, as we could say, I want to select some boundaries. Again, I'm going to go ahead and close chain this guy here. I'm going to do the inside as a closed chain. 
And then just kind of wrapping up and showing you that you could troubleshoot this is we're now only going to machine that top surface area and we're going to go right over those holes that are drilled into this mold. Now, we can start to work our way down from here. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to go back to geodesic again. I may actually, and again, I'm more of a fan of finishing floors before I finish walls. So let's go ahead and go geodesic once again. Again, surface driven. Let's go ahead and knock out the floor inside this pocket. And then I'm going to do that one more time, again, to the outer portions. And as you're seeing is I'm just rinsing, repeating surface driven kind of strategy. So again, as we did our top, we did our inside, and now we did our outside. So now what's left, if we're looking at our model here, is we have to clean up kind of the transitions in between, right? So with those transitions in between, there's a lot of different ways to achieve that. But if you haven't guessed, again, I'm going to go for a geodesic toolpath. And now you guys are going to see me do something wild that a lot of you may not know you could do inside of Fusion. But I can actually pick drive surfaces with selection sets. So instead of me coming through and picking every one of these surfaces a million times, we all do it, right? Is I can actually set up a selection set. So if I go over here to the left and I pick my selection set, you're going to notice it's automatically going to highlight these boundaries for me. Now we are going to switch from a scallop to a blend. And again, as I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. And while that's going, I'm going to go ahead and do my inside area as well. So again, another geodesic strategy. We're going to go ahead and swap this out for a blend. And the drive surfaces this time are going to be my pocket walls. And just like that, we went ahead and created a completely different strategy for going from the outside in between the transition points here. So again, as you're seeing in real time, we're able to kind of break this up by section, by section, by section, and be able to achieve a night and day different finish on our part and our profile. Now, I'm not trying to downplay steep and shallow by any means, guys. There's a place and a use for it, right? Now, thinking about more of the outside of my actual part, we've yet to blend this outside area. This is still a good use case for steep and shallow. These surfaces here may not actually be on the final product. Again, this is a vacuum for mold. We care about the flange area. We don't care about the transition out here. This is just draft so that the part doesn't fit or it doesn't stick, and it allows us to release it off of there. So you guys can still use steep and shallow. I'm not telling you by any means to avoid this toolpath. It still works amazing, and when you think about having to actually select those faces or having to pick things individually, this might be where you still use it, right? Again, I'm not concerned about the walls out here. I'm not, again, this fillet here isn't the biggest deal. I'm concerned about my flange area of my mating part or whatever we're gonna do with this mold. So again, steep and shallow still has its place. It still works absolutely amazing. Now, we have done a lot to this guy and I'm gonna go ahead and jump back here real quick. But the main problem is, is we're now starting to talk about a tool that is too big to get in certain areas. And if I was to simulate this at this point, we should be able to do a comparison. And as you can see, I'm not even gonna actually run simulation because all this blue is basically leftover material. Again, I have my settings set to comparison. We're looking at leftover stock. And with that all being said is we have the ability to now go back and use what's called the corner tool path. So again, is getting back inside of here is we're gonna go with a corner tool path. The point of the corner tool path is to, of course, go to a smaller tool as you're gonna see here. Outside of that though, is it has a rest machining that no other tool path has right now. And that rest machining is the ability to reference a tool. So we're gonna reference our half inch ball here. I'm gonna go ahead and select that tool. So we're looking at the half inch ball. We could actually enlarge that tool, which makes it think it's a little bit bigger and fill in certain gaps. We could also do a detection limit here, but we're gonna leave a lot of things default as they are, and we're gonna see the results that we get. Now, this will take a second to calculate. Usually it's gonna be faster than me being able to tell you guys to not forget to like, follow, and subscribe. Obviously your likes, follows, and subscriptions to my channel gets you the latest updates, but it also helps promote this channel to people out there looking for content like this. Now, as that's still calculating, let's go ahead and expand some things out here. Again, you guys are probably wondering about some of this additional information here. You guys can set up that info through your preferences. I did do some videos on this, but now that we have our actual tool path, this is the part that I absolutely love, is the fact that this is going in 
to all of those internal fillets, not external by any means. So these internal fillets here in my corners, and we are now going in and we're blending those in and we're actually cleaning those out and only machining where we need it. So as you can see with the combination of the newer tool paths, you can achieve a lot when it comes to creating better surfaces, control over how you're machining those surfaces, and of course, reducing cycle time, improving, improving surface finish, all at the same time. So as always, guys, it's not what you know, it's who you know. You know myself over here at JetCAD Cam. If you guys have any problems or running into any issues, feel free to shoot me an email. I'm always happy to help. And as always, have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to have a few this weekend for me.